Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. So it might alarm you all to know that in the process of tithing to Eris Morn, we should actually have kind of created our own destruction. Why? Because the normal tithing process seems like it requires a hive worm. And with one of those things ingested, we have the same monkey's paw blood magic pact within us that originally bound the hive all those years ago same blood pact that requires them to slaughter enemies endlessly or die of starvation. And remember, we're already immortal, or at least functionally immortal. We do not get anything out of that kind of bargain. But thanks to some clever witchcraft from Eris, we were able to avoid the most grisly of fates and still channel hive magic that was necessary for this season's objective, defeating Sivua Wrath and bringing about the resurrection of the Witch Queen. So today, I'm going to go over why we were able to tithe to Eris without a Hive Worm, what it took to bring all of that about, and the other mechanics of Hive Magic behind it all. But first, I wanted to tell you about the expansive and really mysterious lore of this thing that we call eating. It may surprise you, but scholars from some of the most prestigious scientific and academic institutions across the globe have concluded that food is kind of important. But Bife, I hear you saying. Gaming gives me good brain chemicals. I don't have time to step away and make real food. And I hear you there, but real food is important. And that's why we have Factor. They make quick, nutritious meals that you can prepare in just minutes. They have tons of dietary options. You can choose to reduce or increase the amount of meals you're getting from them on the fly. And most importantly of all, they've got all these needle extras, including shakes and desserts and low-calorie options. To get convenient chef quality meals that are ready in a matter of moments, use code POGBIFEOCT50 for 50% off and free shipping. Thanks again to Factor for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the lore. So, to understand the whole tithing thing, let's get back to the Books of Sorrow. In fact, let's actually explain the word first, because I imagine that this is for some of you, it's going to be the first time that you've actually had it explained. It's been bounded about a whole bunch in Destiny, and I realize that not everybody is going to know what a word like tithing means. So, what is a tithe? Well, tithes back in the old days, and I mean ye old European history days, and actually much more ancient than that, tithes were essentially material or monetary shows of support that would be gifted to religious institutions. Tithes are commonly associated, at least in the West, with monetary and material support given to Christian churches, but the concept is not a purely Western one, and it goes way further back than Christianity. The idea of monetary support to a god of your choice is not new. There's historical records showing that Babylonians, ancient Greeks, and Carthaginians all made use of a tithing system. There's a lot of older lore from world history indicating that a tithe represented 10% of a person's income, give or take. Which wasn't strictly true and sometimes was simplified across cultures. Hence why I call it law and not fact. It's an associated idea, but it's not always provably true that it was 10% on the dot every time. The word tithe is supposedly derived from that 10, but it's not necessarily something to do with 10% every single time. Some of you will also sit there and probably be making a good connection here, which is, wait, isn't a tithe just a tax? And yeah, it is, but with a bit more of a broad definition. As you can imagine in ancient cultures, money wasn't the only thing that people had to trade. Whilst ancient cultures as far back as the Greeks have minted coins, they weren't always in use and monetary systems didn't exist in some cultures. People would barter and trade for goods in a similar way, and tithes consisted of goods as well as monetary support in cultures that had money. For example, whilst some ancient Greek republics did print money as I said, the ancient Egyptians didn't use it at all. A farmer who worked their land might give up livestock or produce as a part of a tithe instead of, well, money, because yeah, they didn't have money. With that in mind, hopefully you now understand the vague idea. A tithe is something of value that you give up in a dedicated fashion to a religious institution or god. In destiny terms, the hive tithe to their gods. But they aren't out here tithing glimmer or legendary shards. I mean, aside from anything else, look at the inflation. 
it's out of control since Bungie announced that they're going to sunset legendary shards. More importantly, though, they are tithing something much more important, and that is the power that they create from destruction. Oryx actually was the one who set up this system of tithing, and he set it up in the Books of Sorrow. This is where we get our first record of tithing as a system that the Hive used. Appropriately, a lot of the language that's used to describe this moment is actually very reflective of religion and religious texts and tomes. This feels almost like a verse from an apostle in the Bible. It's found in the Grimoire, namely the Books of Sorrow, verse 3-9, carved in ruin. Take a listen, at least to the relevant excerpt. And Savathun said, King Oryx, how will we feed our worms? Did you use my plan? Oryx told the Hive, I am the Taken King, and here is my law. You, Thrall, each of you will claw and scream and kill what you can. Take enough to feed your worm and a little more to grow. Tithe the rest to the Acolyte who commands you. You, Acolytes, lead your Thrall in battle. Take enough killing to feed your worm and a little more to grow, and take the tithe of the thrall you lead. Then tithe the remainder to the knight or wizard who commands you. Thus you pay tribute. You, knights and wizards, lead your followers in battle. Take enough devastation to feed your worm and a little more to grow, and take the tithe of your followers. Then take another portion, as much as you dare, and use it for your own purposes. But if it is too much, your peers will kill you and take it. Then tithe the remainder to the Ascendant you serve. An Ascendant will be those among the Hive who gather enough tribute to enter the Netherworld. They will pay a tithe to those above them. And thus, tribute will flow up the chain, so that Savathun and Zivuarath and myself will be fed a great river of tribute and we will use that excess to feed our gods and to study the deep. Thus, all worms will be fed as long as we continue our crusade. This is my law. I carve it thus in ruin. I art. So, in the context of the hive and their gods, that's how tithing works. We're not gifting our gods with money or material goods. We're gifting them with power born of destruction, power that will feed their worms and bring everyone closer to the final shape. In this season, this is exactly what was happening when Eris accepted our tithes. We took part in bouts of destruction within the Altars of Summoning and tithed the power we gained to Eris Morn. But again, this process requires a hive worm, and we don't have one. Except... Well, we, we kind of do. No, I'm not referring to the parasite of Savathun locked away in our grenade launchers. I'm talking about a worm that everyone has in their possession this season. The worm within the Acolyte's staff, your seasonal artifact. Take a listen to what Eris Morn has to say about her first transformation and how it pertains to this staff. The Hive have taken much from me. By naming the worms, I have taken from them, and I must take from you. The splinter of hive worm rests in your staff. It is enough to bind us and mark you as my acolyte. By the sword logic of the hive, your conquests strengthen me. You must tithe mightily if I am to become strong enough to defeat Zivu Arath. So the staff Eris gave us was enough to mark us as one of her acolytes and made us a link within the hive magic. It created enough of a link between us and Eris that our tithes were directed to her as we took part in the rituals. But the creation of this staff reveals that the magic involved is indeed a gruesome affair. Take a listen to the process of its creation, undertaken by Eris and overwatched by Imaru. It can be found in the Veiled Tithe's Helmet lore tab. It reads as follows. Responsibility, taken in secret, proudly upheld. 
Eris had whittled the Hive Knight's denuded femur into a shaft and driven it deep with osmium nails. She'd wrapped it in velvet string, attached her sigil to it. Now it chimed as she turned it in her hand. Yeah, make it pretty, Imaru said, rolling his eyes. That'll help. Real useful. I am binding the staff with my power, she said, archly. What use have you been? I told you what to do. I gathered the materials. I created the staff. I infused it with light and soul fire. Do not presume your ideas were essential to this process. You think you're such an expert in hive magic, Imaru scoffed. But you know what? You're just doing parlor tricks. Without me, that staff would be nothing more than a fancy piece of bone. Eris gripped the staff and held it out to test its heft. It was unbalanced. She returned it to the work table. Do not make yourself intolerable. Imaru moved so he could look Eris in the face. She raised her eyes, staring him down. He came close. She did not step back. Or what? You might scare everyone else, but you don't scare me. There's nothing you can do except put up with me. Eris returned to her work, raising a hand and pushing him out of the way. He huffed, watching her as she resumed sharpening the points of the staff's base. With this power, the Guardian may devise rituals of their own. It will empower their light and channel the Hive's vile power. You're welcome, Imaru said smugly. Eris ignored him and examined the staff she had created. It represented hours spent sliding a blade's edge over layers of dead, porous hive chitin, carving it with spells and imbuing it with magic. At its head was Solfire Icar encased in vitreous light, a gleaming vessel. One last reagent. She turned back to her work table. The worm squirmed and squealed under her knife. It seems clear from the end of this that Eris had to kill a hive worm and bind it to us in order for the staff to associate us as an acolyte within the magic of her rituals and the process of our tithing. It's been imbued with metals from a world beyond our own, if we're to believe that the osmium nails being used in its construction are found in the throne world, which ultimately means that it's actually from Fundament. The staff is carved from the bones of Eris's mortal foes, empowered with ritual magics that she has learned to command and has been tipped with soulfire, ichor, and light. It is a manifestation of the hive's power it is something terrible to behold, and it is ours to wield. Examining the lore tab of the staff itself, though, gives us a further examination of the hive power attached to this thing. Master Rahul of the Cryptarchy had his own thoughts and clarifications to add in a report to Commander Zavala. To say that he was hesitant would be an understatement. Take a listen. A foreboding staff bearing engravings of hive runes and bound with mystical charms. Commander, speak to me not of the darkness. I want no part. I once cautioned an overeager guardian who loitered near me in the tower. I did not mean their command over strand or stasis, but rather the deep, ancient corruption that empowers our enemies and corrodes our very souls. This force... This evil, if I may use such a simplistic term, surrounds us, and we must do all we can to limit our exposure, lest we find ourselves sinking below its dark waves. And so it was with great hesitancy that I examined the unusual Acolyte's Staff created by Eris Morn and Imaru, the renegade ghost. I find their alliance baffling as she holds no love for the Hive, and he is the foul creature who resurrected Savathun. But even that is not as strange as the staff itself. 
In addition to being bound with charms and inscribed with powerful runes, the staff contains a small fragment of hive worm. Due to a ghastly ritual and a metaphysical loophole in sword logic philosophy, a guardian wielding the staff is able to transfer the power of their defeated foes to Miss Morn through a blood tithe. Seeking answers, I sought Miss Morn herself. I found her beyond a portal she erected in the helm. She was waiting on an elaborate bone dais in a forgotten corner of Savathun's throne world she called the Athenaeum, as it allowed her to study the secrets of Savathun's spire. The seclusion of the locale was appealing, but when Miss Morn began to change, I fled, leaving my curiosity behind me. There is power within the staff, Commander. Terrible power. Speak to me not of the darkness. Master Rahul Regardless of whether what Master Rahul said about this staff is true or not, one thing is definitely clear. We were unbelievably fortunate that Eris was as strong in her convictions as she always said she was. She could have easily abandoned all of us for the power that was being tithed to her, power that we had fed her directly through the dark invocations made using the Acolyte's staff. But she chose to abandon that power, for the good of all mankind and for the future of the universe. When our time within the Oubliette is complete, we should look to destroy this staff and allow the tithes we made in her name to become a remnant of history lest we should see the terrible effects of such power grow too much and become impossible to contain. The power of the Hive's logic is bound up with the power of corruption. It is as inherent as the tides beneath the moon. We should treat this artifact with caution, above all others. But that's all from me for now, and I hope you did enjoy this video. Give me your own thoughts down below in the comments section. Do you wonder if maybe the construction of this staff gives us a hint at any other ways that we might channel Hive power. Do you reckon, and I think this is really the key question of it all, that a Guardian might be able to ingest a Hive Worm for themselves and maybe tap into Dark Power that way? Granted, it might leave them in a situation where they would need to tithe upwards to a God, or it could simply leave them in a place where, again, all they have is the access to Hive Magic alongside a terrible price to be paid in a Blood Tithe. It's very unclear, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. If you do want more Destiny lore, and in particular, more lore from Season of the Witch and Final Shape, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership as always is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.